For me, orcas are one of the most captivating and intriguing animals in our world. In legend, they have mystical powers. In reality, they are incredibly intelligent and family-focused creatures. But for the past 60 years, hundreds of orcas have been captured and put in captivity to be on display and entertainment for humans. John Hargrove, a former orca trainer for almost 20 years, exposes the brutal reality of this world. What is good YouTube? My name is Ash Porter and welcome to the channel. And today I have a, a pretty different book, but a book I am well excited to share with you. This is Beneath the Surface by John Hargrove. Also, before we get going in this video, if you're like a drinker or you wanna have a really fun game, you have to take a shot every time I say the word orca. Have fun. For almost 20 years, John Hargrove was a senior orca trainer at SeaWorld and he worked with over 20 different orcas. He trained them, he swam with them, he performed with them in front of thousands and thousands of people. You know, in many ways, he was one of the best. Yet in 2012, he resigned after having enough of the horrors of the behind the scenes at SeaWorld. He decided enough was enough. He then later featured in the famous documentary Blackfish and then now has come out and written his own book with his own experiences of this world. Now, I wanna be clear, this book isn't just exposing SeaWorld, you know, yes, it has bits of that in it and like his truths from working there. But it's more than that. Actually what Hargrove does really well is he educates. As you read this book, you learn more and more about orcas and what they're actually like. You know, as well as sharing his highs and lows, he teaches you about the intelligence, the beauty and the companionship of an orca whale. And this education is really important because one thing he makes so clear in this book is that captivity is not good for these animals. In fact, he would even go as far to say that it changes an orca so much, and this is a direct quote from him, that they are no longer really orcas, but mutants, genetically killer whales, but made up of warped psychologies. And he's very clear on this, and he tries to educate the reader with this reality that orcas in captivity are so different to orcas in the wild. Now, for someone who, as a child, watched the film Free Willy, I don't know if you've ever seen it, absolute classic film, and like fell in love with this mysterious and captivating animal, this book is a really heartbreaking read. You know, some of the stories from these books, they just disgust you. It's almost like it is straight out of Free Willy and it highlights just the human capacity for selfishness and greed. You know, I found my heart breaking for these incredibly intelligent creatures. You know, your heart breaks for those trainers that have lost their lives swimming and working with orca whales, for their friends and family, for the trainers that have had horrific injuries and life-changing consequences because of it. You know, your heart breaks for people like John who have devoted their life to working with these animals, to loving them, to caring for them, for the companionship and love that a corporation could never experience with these things, yet, when he shares a reality, a truth, a behind the scenes, he's shut out and condemned for it. In my opinion, this was an incredibly brave piece of work by John Hargrove. Once you read it, you'll see that this book just can't have been easy to write. It divided opinions. It divided his life, you know, he lost friends who were still loyal to SeaWorld in the process. He was ostracized and pushed out. Pushed out. But this is an important book because it highlights our ability to abuse nature, to abuse the world around us to get exactly what we want. And actually without people like John speaking out from like places of experience and fact, change can never happen. I flipping love this book. Whether you love orcas or you just love animals or whether, you know what, you just wanna be educated on the extent of corporate corruption and greed, this is the book for 
you. Now, as usual, to get the most out of this book, you need to go and read it yourself. So please go and grab a copy, give it a read. But equally, I'm gonna share some of the key bits that I've learned and I think you can take away as well. I think some of my favorite parts of this book and the best insight was actually the parts where Hargrove was talking about his own personal experiences, both the good and the bad, in terms of working with these orcas. Now, particularly interesting are these moments where he describes basically his near-death experiences, where orcas go over to what he calls the dark side, just for, for moments, and it's all about how he reacts and his team around him reacts to, you know, calm the situation and save each other's lives. I think of what a lot of his stories highlight to me, above, more than even like the grim reality of the behind the scenes of life at places like SeaWorld was actually the incredible skill and dedication that these trainers have and also the incredible relationship they build with these animals. You know, it really is absolutely outstanding. Whether it's the skill, the knowledge, the commitment, or just the plain bravery to do what they do, they deserve a lot of praise. I think a bad analogy and a similar kind of admiration I have for these trainers is that of the same of soldiers where I completely disagree with the context of what they're doing. You know, I disagree with war, I disagree with um, orcas being in captivity, yet you cannot condone the skill, the courage, the bravery of those involved. I hope that makes sense. I think some of the other like best learning from this book is actually how does captivity affect these orcas, these animals? You know, before reading this book, the only real side effect I knew is that, especially in the whales who have a bigger, I think it's called a dorsal fin, like the big fin that comes out on top, that theirs generally in captivity like flops over. So like in free willy, that's the case. But when you think about it, really, there's bound to be a ton of side effects going from literally the oceans of the world to a pool like, a few, like 30, 50 meters wide and deep, there's gonna be consequences. But also in the wild, these are animals which they live in pods, these big hierarchical family units, which are actually a matriarchy, not a patriarchy, which is very interesting. But then they can suddenly, they get brought into captivity with either by themselves or random whales from other pods, which they don't know, they don't get on with. And in the wild as well, generally pods don't mix that you stick to your family unit. And so there's so many things which are different and just plain wrong for them. I think one of the most interesting things is that because these are incredibly intelligent animals, now if you do your research you'll find out that like, they are very intelligent to the point where they think we think they have their own languages depending on their pods, like each individual pod might have its own language, stuff like that, it's incredible. But anyway, these are highly intelligent creatures which get put into captivity and they get plain bored. You know, apart from the times when they're training and performing, which believe it or not, isn't all day, um, it's actually a small fraction of it. They spend most of the time just floating around in pools. This means they end up like fighting each other, which you think, oh no, like a orca boxing. It's not, but it's like this thing called raking where they like, just basically savage to each other. Or they'll try and play with a trainer, which could result in their death. Or the final thing is that for most of them, they end up like, a, like, Eat, trying to like scratch the paint off the walls of the pool. And this is so bad for their teeth, it leads to infections and it's like, it's pointless. But also they're badly affected by all the chemicals that get in the pool, it leads to like a worse immune system and they just become more susceptible to illness that they would never have in the wild. But, and all of this, to be honest, it just leads to a much shorter lifespan. Like they estimate that in the wild, orcas can live between 50 to 100 years. It's like a human lifespan. Whereas in captivity, they, they only reach like a maximum of 30. But I think probably the most heartbreaking thing I learned in this book, which again, when you think of it, it just kind of makes sense. But when you read it from an expert, it kind of cements it that actually, in captivity, so often, 
calves, so like the baby orcas, are separated from their mothers really early on. And what's interesting and heartbreaking about this is that in the wild, an orca calf is a calf forever. The child never separates from its mother. It becomes part of the pod, and this matriarchal society functions like that. It just doesn't happen in the wild. But you know, in places like SeaWorld, the, the mothers will give birth, and then in literally a matter of months, or maybe a few years, the calf will get shipped off somewhere else. And especially if it's female, it will get shipped off to breed and have its own babies at a way too young of an age. This must be traumatizing for these orcas, these intelligent beings. And obviously, the combination of all these things is just gonna have a negative effect on the orcas. And then, the final thing I wanna talk about of this book, because again, you can go and read it for yourself and get the most out of it, is he touches upon his experiences, his close friends' experiences, and the insider kind of perspective on two deaths that came very close together of Alexis Martinez in Spain and then Dawn Bradshaw in America. Dawn's death particularly struck the world because that's kind of what was highlighted and made public in the Blackfish documentary. But Alexis died literally a few months before. And John just gives this incredible account of the deaths and how it related to SeaWorld and his insider perspective on how heartbreaking it was, how they should have not happened, and then how SeaWorld ended up passing the blame from themselves to then saying it was their fault that those dead trainers, it was their fault that they died. It's horrific to read about, but it's necessary and it's also fascinating. And there we go. That's kind of the stuff that stood out to me of this book. It is, I know I say it a million times, one of those books that you've got to read for yourself to appreciate it. There is so much more. I can't tell John's stories. He needs to tell them. So read the book because it is worth it. Anyway, I have been Ash Porter. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.